Recalling the last three videos, we had a look at the outer regressive model and we also had a look at the distributed leg model. Now there is an option to include both of them in one model if that makes sense, if all the independent variables are gonna affect the outcome variable of sales. And the way we choose what model to include them to include in how many legs is based on some criteria, Akaiki and Schwartz. So we're gonna look at that in the next videos. But for now, let's understand the intuition of why this might work. So suppose we're still having our sales of jeans that we are predicting for the year of 2019 based on sales one period, one year ago in 2018, based on sales two years ago in 2017, and also the change in price in the current period they're interested of 2019, and also a change in price in 2018. Now, we could still go further and have effects from a change in price in 2017, two years ago, but according to our model, we suppose that that's gonna be an insignificant effect, it's gonna be very small to consider it, so we're just not considering it. And here we have the unexplained or the unobserved terms that also have an effect on the sales, but we do not know them, we cannot measure them. For instance, the state of the economy. Do we have a recession or do we have growth? Are people more likely to invest in clothes or not? Things of that nature. Now, how do we interpret this? Remember, every slope coefficient is a partial effect in the regression line. So for instance, over here, if we assume that beta one, let's put some examples, let's say that beta one is gonna be equal to 1.1 with a positive sign and it's significant at the 5% significance level. How do we interpret that? Assuming everything else stays constant. There's no change in sales in 2017, no change in sales in price in 19, no change in uh, price in 2018, only sales in 2018 increases if sales in 2018 would increase, right, because we're forecasting for the future, if that increases by one unit and the units in sales are measured in thousands of dollars, so one times $1,000, we have $1,000 more in sales in 2019, then it is very likely that we're going to increase our sales in 2019 by $1,100. And I'm saying it's not exactly $1,100. That's going to happen on average. We, re, this is a regression. This is statistics. There's no complete certainty, just average estimates. So that would increase by 1.1 times $1,000. And remember in the video, in the video of the outer regressive model, we gave an intuitive thought why this would be the case because more sales in one year would generate more customers to the shop. Those customers would generate word of mouth so that in the future year, we would have a networking effect, so to speak. More customers would come to the shop to buy our jeans. That's why the sales would still go up. Now, suppose that we're still having an effect from sales in 2017 on sales in 2019. So that would be smaller because it's two years before. That word of mouth effect is diminishing. And let's say that effect would be only 0.7. So assuming nothing else changes, not sales in 18, not price here, not price there, only sales, so only sales in 2018 would, sorry, 2017 would increase by one unit times $1,000. So that would go up by $1,000. That word of mouth effect would translate into sales in 2018. And only then it would translate into sales in 2019. So we would have this indirect effect, which would be 0 0.7 times 1,000, 0 0.7 times $1,000. We would still have a positive effect of increasing sales of $700 because sales in 2017 went up by $1,000. Hope this makes sense. With the same logic, we can interpret every other partial coefficient. By keeping everything else constant, we would like to see what would be the effect of an increase in price in 2019. Well, an effect of an increase in price would logically be a decrease in sales because it, people would buy less jeans. So that would be, for instance, minus 0 0.6. So if the price goes up for the dollars by $1, sorry, the price goes up for the jeans by $1, price goes up by $1, sales in 2019 would go down by minus 0 0.6 times 1,000. So it'd go down by $600. That would be the intuition by keeping everything else constant. The same logic goes to the last coefficient as well. Whatever the number is, that would be the partial effect of this variable, the price in 2018 on sales in 2019. That's what matters in this model. And uh, the way we note the model, that's also a notation thing just, just to be comfortable with. So that stays for short, ARDL model. And in brackets, we usually note the legs of the autoregressive variable, which is the legs of the dependent variable, and the legs of the independent variable. So for the first, we would have how many legs? Let me change colors for that. We would have sales one leg ago, two legs ago. So two legs for the autoregressed variable. And how many over here? One legged variable of the independent variable. So price is lagged for one period. So two, one, that's how we would read it. Let's suppose for the sake of practice, one more. Uh, this would not be there. So we would have price in the current period, 
that by definition, let's say this is not here, by definition, no leg means zero legs. We would have just the, the price effect in the current period, so that stays for zero. And here, we would still have two legs of the dependent variable, so that would be ARDL to zero. Anyway, hope this makes sense, and we're done.